This is uh, chapter 5 in the text. Starts about page 164. How to use the box model with spacing, borders, and background. There's a lot that goes into this. Um, unfortunately, again, in the interest of time, I'm going to have to move somewhat quickly. So if uh, I'm not clear on something or you, you, know, you have questions, just please uh, shout, shout that out and we'll take a closer look. So this is one of these aha moments you have in, in the web development world when you learn about the box model. Um, here you have the actual element and the way the box model works is that immediately past the element in this gray area you have what we call padding and then right at the edge of padding you have what we call border and then past border you have what we call margin. And if this looks maybe somewhat familiar, it's probably because you saw it here in, uh, in Firebug. When you isolate an element and then you come over here to layout, uh, it kind of looks similar to this. Right? Here's your element. You can see what it's highlighting up above. Here's your padding. Here's your border. Here's your margin. So uh, this is a really nice tool to help you uh, work with the box model, which of course is... Uh, quite complex. This uh, sort of outlines how uh, complex it can be to, to get the true height and or width of an element. Uh, it, it, you know, you could get the height or width, but is that really all you're looking for? Most of the time you're trying to get at least to the border, so you're going to include um, your, your padding as well as your border width. Um, but if you also want to include margin, then you need to add it all up. So the real calculation for height could become you know, your top, margin, border, and padding, plus height, plus bottom, padding, border, and margin. Um, so keep that in mind. just depends on what you're after. You'll have to adjust that calculation. Here's some basic HTML. Um, you know, nothing crazy about it. It's just a heading and a paragraph. Uh, that are embedded in a section. And here, what we're doing with the body, we're giving the body some border. We're applying uh, some, some styling on the border, like dotted and black. We're giving it some margin. We're doing the same to section. We're giving it some border, setting a defined width, and applying margin. Uh, yeah, we're just doing the same thing throughout, really. And when you load this into a browser, this is what we get. So you notice that the, the body is sort of pushed in some because of that margin. Remember, margin's on the outside, and here's our dotted border. And you can follow that in. Uh, this is just how the box model works. Here you see some properties for working with height and width. It used to be we just had height and width, and then we got the min and max values, which are great. They weren't respected by earlier browsers, but it's pretty reliable now, so you can make use of those. And they work exactly like you would think, setting min and max. Here's some examples of using them, setting uh, width to a fixed or absolute value uh, or a relative value. Um, and then there's auto, which is based on the containing block, and we'll see an example of that here in just a moment. Uh, setting the height of a an area works very similar, and then you can see how the maximums and mins work. Uh, here's how you set properties for margin. You have just margin, or you have margin top, margin right, margin bottom, margin left. You can uh, use any of the properties you want. It really doesn't matter. It's more of a stylistic thing. Um, but the way they work when you just use margin, uh, with margin you're setting one or more of these values. I guess technically two or more. Um, so margin, uh, the, the way you have to think about it, it's always going to go top, right, bottom, left. And there's this mnemonic device here, trouble, to help you remember that. Top, right, bottom, left. So here's some examples. This is isolating a single side and setting the value. Or you can just use margin to target multiple sides. When you supply a single value, that goes all around, top, right, bottom, and left. When you supply just two values, the first value goes to top and bottom, 
and the second value goes to left and right. When you supply three, the first value goes to top, I believe the second value goes to bottom, and then this last value goes to uh, right and left. And finally, uh, if you specify four values, it goes top, right, bottom, left. Padding works very much the same. You can use padding alone, you can target individual properties, and you can use combinations uh, just like we did with margin. Here's a page that is leveraging some of these properties. The CSS code that it's using. And here's something interesting. Notice that the, the width of the body is being set to 600 pixels. And then the margin here, we have margin being applied to uh, top and bottom at 1 EM. And then auto on both right and left. So this is one of those things, margin remembers on the outside of border. So this is going to push off on the walls and center the content. That's a very, very common technique if you're looking for a centered website. 